About 90 years ago, Peugeot started with a two series, this typical signature with the three letters here and the zero in the middle to give you an idea of what car you're driving. And now, 2019, we're allowed to drive the brand new Peugeot 208. The car has grown a little bit. It's a little bit lighter than its predecessor. And very important, when it comes to the market, it will not only be available with combustion engines, it will also be available as the first full electrical 208. And this is the car we're gonna have a closer look today. At the moment I'm driving the top petrol version of the 28, which is a 1.2 litre three-cylinder engine and that offers 96 kilowatt or 131 horsepower and 230 newton meters of maximum torque. And that is a standard combined in that car with an eight-speed automatic gearbox. And that package really works well. The car accelerates quite nice and um, the numbers are not so bad. So the top speed, they say it's 208 kilometers per hour. Acceleration from zero to 100 kilometers per hour is only 8.7 seconds. And I think that's quite okay numbers. And very important with that car is the engine is quite nicely insulated. So the good thing here is even if you use higher refs for massive acceleration, you will not have this typical three cylinder noise in the car. You will just have a very nice, nice, yeah, nice solid sound which I really do like a lot. When the 208 hits the market, there are three completely different drivetrains available. One is the 1.2 litre three-cylinder petrol engine, which offers a power range between 75 up to 131 uh, horsepower. And that car is either uh, gear shifted with a five or six speed manual or with an eight speed automatic gearbox. And then there is a 1.5 litre diesel engine that offers 102 horsepower. And of course the car we are driving, which is the new 208 electric. And that car features a 100 kilowatt electric engine or 136 horsepower engine. And that then delivers a range, a drive range with a full battery loaded uh, from up to 340 kilometers. The electric 208 features a 100 kilowatt electric engine. This is the yeah, most power the engine can deliver, so 136 horsepower. And the so-called permanent power it delivers is only 57 kilowatt. And this is important because this is the base figure to um, give you some information about the insurance you have to pay for the car. Uh, on top of that you get 260 newton meters of maximum torque. And um, this is a package that works quite well in the car. So if you push the pedal to the metal, that really delivers some driving pleasure and um, important with that car is the top speed is limited at 150 kilometers per hour and it accelerates from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in only 8.1 seconds. At a household socket the 50 kilowatt hour battery of the 28 is fully charged in about 24 hours. It takes around 11 hours on a 4.6 kilowatt wall box and on a 100 kilowatt fast charger, 80% are done in just 30 minutes. The new 2.8 looks from the front a lot more aggressive than its predecessor. And one thing that really catches your eyes when you look at the car is the new so-called saber tooth design of the daytime running light. Very important here is to know the car comes as standard with halo headlamps, but depending on the trim level and on the features you buy, the car then comes with full LED headlamps and full LED daytime running light. With 1 meter 75 in width, the car is a typical small car. And when you look at the front, there are two important things you have to know regarding to our car, which is the electric. It differs regarding to the grille because you do find a second color in here, which is the color of the car inside of the grille. And another thing is the big line at the front comes with the electric version in two different colors. The 208 comes as standard with 15 inch steel wheels or 16 inch in the next trim level. But if you buy the GT or GT line version, you do find 17 inch alloys at the car. These are the, the rims we have mounted in our test car. With 4 meters 6, the new 208 is about 9 centimeters longer than its predecessor and about 3 centimeters lower. And that gives the car a lot more of a dynamic look. Very important is on top, the windshield, the front window has been moved more towards the rear of the car and that gives the car the extra push to the, to the front. Um, if you do buy the trim level GT or GT line as, as a package, you do find wheel arches in glossy black and that really makes the car look completely different. So it got a completely different stance and I think it looks a lot more solid and a look more sporty with these black wheel arches. My most beloved point of view for the new 208 is from the rear side because from that point of view the car looks as I think 
the most yeah muscular the most massive and sporty and very important here at the last pillar you can see the big e which indicates this is the electric version looking at the rear of the car you do find the three claw uh, daytime running light in the taillights with led technology and you do find between these taillights a glossy black panel which you may already know from the new 508 and that gives the car yeah a bit more power from the rear and when you look straight from the rear to the car you'd find these shoulders nicely shaped and they really make the car look a lot more sporty from the rear view the 208 features as standard the most important driver assist and a safety system so you always get a lane keeping assist you do find an emergency brake system you do on top find a cruise control and you do find which i think it's quite nice uh, traffic sign recognition all as standard but you can have a lot more and so you can order an adaptive cruise control or you can order an active lane assist which not only keeps the car on the road when you get too close to the to the edge it also keeps the car on the lane so this is yeah let's say nearly autonomous driving the standard uh, 208 with a combustion engine is quite quiet and I really do like this but the electric one is a completely different level so the only noise you hear at the moment is the road because that's not the best road in the world but the rest of the car doesn't give you any noise at all it's just a little little bit of a typical electric noise but that's it and that's, it's something where i would say it's a really an absolutely big plus regarding to the comfort one of the absolute highlights of the new 208 is for sure the 3d i cockpit which is not a standard uh, system so if you buy the car as a base version you do find standard instruments but this uh, this system here comes as standard with the trim level allure or gt or gt line and this really is something very new because it really has different layers and uh, when you switch between the different modes you can use it is looks a bit like the car is playing games so it's a bit yeah uh, i would say a bit too much from my from my from my perspective but on the other side it really provides you information in at least two different layers which means the important informations are more prominent and more towards the driver and if you get used to that that really provides you with yeah a better view of the things and Peugeot said uh, when you for instance get an emergency information like you have to brake or something like it that is this also pops out and it's more prominent and that should um, reduce the reaction time up to 1.0.5 uh, seconds which I, which I find quite interesting but the rest of the interior is also quite modern so you do find five seven or up to ten inch screens here at the center console this is the one we have very nice it's really big inside of such a small car and on top of this you do find up to four usb uh, sockets and one of them is the most modern it's the usb-c socket so that is something i really do like because that gives you a car which is up to date today and will still work in about two years time the 28 is available in the four trim levels like active allure and gt who wants driving pleasure comfort and technology will certainly decide for the 100 horsepower petrol in the allure trim level Especially as this, together with the optional 2100 Euro GT line package, almost offers a fully equipped car. Talking about the materials and the craftsmanship of the 28, I think the interior is absolutely fine. Of course, you do find loads of plastic, but that's typical for a small car. There is some soft touch, but most of it is plastic. But what is unusual is how it it feels how it looks because you do have surfaces that look a bit like carbon fiber you do have this nice green stitching here the electric car and you do find for instance these yeah very prominent air outtakes here and um, you have this piano in the middle to work with the uh, infotainment and work with the uh, air, co air condition all the stuff so that really gives you a very fresh very modern and very nice interior talking about the practicability and the yeah compartments for storage here inside the car that's absolutely fine you do find quite nice compartments in the door you do find two cup holders in the center console you have another small compartment beneath the armrest and you do find another one here at the front and you have one which you can close a bit more at the top of the front center console and this is very nice because this is also the optional charging point wireless charging point for your mobile so nobody will see and steal it the Peugeot 208 offers three different drive modes which are echo standard and sport 
And the thing is, there is not such a big of a difference between these drive modes. So if you, for instance, switch from standard to sport, the only thing you can really feel is a bit how the engine reacts, but the rest is very similar to the others. On top of this, with the electric version we drive, you do have the option to choose between two different uh, recuperation modes. One is the so-called D mode, that is a yeah, then the car behaves a bit like a standard combustion engine when you get your foot off the pedal. So um, it reduces the speed as you used to it. If you use the B mode, um, which you can use by just pulling this, the, the, the gear shift stick here, um, the car recuperates more, so, which means when you get your foot off the uh, pedal, the car yeah decelerates a bit more and re recuperates more and that gives you the option to use the so-called one pedal drive which means you do not need to use the brake to just reduce the speed normally. Um, the car features a 50 kilowatt hour battery and that should give you a range of 340 kilometers and uh, Peugeot says the car should take 16.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer driven. We didn't match this figure, we used about 17.1.3, something like it. Um, but it is important to know that we are not able to drive quick here in, um, in the area where we are. So we, I would say if you drive that car in a normal European country, um, home day-to-day -day driving, you should expect not 340 kilometers of maximum, maximum range, you better expect 250. And I think this is a safe and secure number you can drive every day easily with a fully charged battery. The space the 208 offers here at the front for passenger, for, for driver and co-driver is really nice. So even me as a tall person, I do sit perfectly in the car and have plenty of space here, plenty of space everywhere. So it's really comfortable. And important is the seats. They do not offer only more than enough comfort. They also offer loads and loads of support. So really, really nice. Important to know is that the 208 features the so-called eye cockpit, which means you do not look through the steering wheel into the cockpit. You look above the steering wheel into the cockpit and with normal uh, new Peugeots I have a bit of, of a problem with this low small steering wheel but inside of this car you do sit yeah it feels like very down to the ground and that um, gives you a perfect seating position and with that car here the um, the unusual position of the steering wheel and the size of the steering wheel is not a problem at all it's really nice and very easy to adapt. The 208 offers a boot size of 265 liters with the rear seats up, up to 1106 liters with the rear seats fold down. And as you can see, this is more than enough for our equipment today. Important is to know when you look at the competitors, for instance, the Seat Ibiza, that offers about 80 liters more with the rear seats up and about 100 liters more with the rear seats down. So this is not the most practical car in the world. But important is, it doesn't make a difference if you buy the electric version or the combustion version, both of these versions offer the same size of boot. So now take the diesel version of the 28 for a short test drive and uh, this car features a 1.5 liter diesel engine and that delivers uh, 75 kilowatt or 102 horsepower and 250 newton meters of maximum torque and uh, this is always combined with a six-speed manual gearbox and that works well and it's as quiet as the petrol engine is but it is not as agile as the 130 horsepower uh, petrol or the 100 kilowatt electric version is so it's a lot more yeah, easy and very important is with the six-speed manual gearbox the last the highest six gear is yeah quite a long one so if you drive about 100 km per hour through the countryside and you want to accelerate and push the pedal to the metal the car instantly says to you down to fourth gear not fifth fourth and if you don't do this and you just press the pedal to the metal it accelerates but very smoothly very gentle and so it's not the yeah the drive machine um, but on the other hand it um, offers a consumption which is less than 3.5 liters when you believe into the official figures but I think you can easily drive that car with about five liters per hundred kilometer driven so I think that's yeah a small car with a very nice consumption something that I don't like so much with the 28 is the steering um, the steering itself works perfectly uh, it's precise enough it's not nervous it's all good but the thing is when you um, drive to, through a curve or a tight band and you come back with the steering and it comes into the center position and you then want to go over this position into the next curve for instance it always feels like it wants to stay in the center position a bit too much 
and this is not perfect when it comes to comfort and driving dynamics. With a base price of 15,490 euros for the 75 horsepower 208, the Peugeot is not a bargain. A Seat Ibiza with an 80 horsepower petrol engine starts at 14,990 euros and a Ford Fiesta is offered from 12,950 euros already in Germany. So that was my first test drive in the brand new Peugeot 208. Uh, what I really do like with the car is the exterior design because that's modern, that's fresh and this is the same with the interior. Very nice and especially with the 3D eye cockpit and this 10 inch screen in the center console that really makes the car yeah completely at a different level. And um, then when we talk about positive things of the car what I really do like is the drive because um, the combustion, the 130 uh, horsepower petrol engine, as well as the electric car, is quite dynamic. It's really, really fun to drive. It's really agile and yeah, it provides loads of driving pleasure. Uh, but then when we talk about pricing, the 208 starts at about 15,500 euros and that's about 500 euros more than a Seat Ibiza, so a direct competitor. So it's not a real bargain. And when you then talk about the entrance price of the electric version we drove, which is above 30,000 euros in Germany, that's a lot of money for a small electric car. So I'm not quite sure if this is the right price to say we enter into the new world of electromobility, but maybe the market will have a different opinion.